He was assassinated two yes. days before 9-11 happened yes. by Osama bin Laden. Do you know why they assassinated him before 9-11? Al-Qaeda had a plan to take over Afghanistan. And ultimately, their goal was to expand their government across the globe, which is against all the values of Islam. And they found out that there is an obstacle on their way. To do it, they needed a territory. And the best territory was a war, a war-torn country called Afghanistan. But one thing they didn't realize and they didn't take into account was the presence of a man called Ahmad Shah Massoud that created a resistance against such idea. Al-Qaeda changed their tactic. Their tactic was that now that we cannot defeat him in the battlefield, let's assassinate him. The same group, the team of Al-Qaeda, which managed to create the chaos and the tragedy of 9-11, same group planned my father's assassination. Your father actually warned of imminent attacks on U.S. soil yes. prior to his assassination, which, to my understanding, fell on deaf ears. Now you're here, 20-something years later. Same deaf ears. <laughs> warning America that there's another coming attack. It's like history repeats itself. The attacks in Pakistan since the Taliban takeover of Afghanistan increased 500%. They want to have a territory that they can operate, they can maneuver, they can recruit, they can train, and they can export. So here to control and from there to export the same ideology. We all know where Ayman al-Zawahiri was hiding, and we all know what uh, Saif al-Ad, the leader of al-Qaeda, has been called his fellow uh, friends and uh, colleagues to come, which he said he clearly indicated, and he said, all of you come to Afghanistan, now Afghanistan is a safe haven for us. Uh, many terrorists, they went inside the United States, and luckily they got captured. Right now, there are more than 21 terrorist groups active in Afghanistan, al-Qaeda, Jaish al-Adl, TTP, Ansar Allah, Islamic Movement of Uzbekistan, the Uyghurs, and many, many other terrorist groups, regional and international, they are active in Afghanistan. We are very much aware, and all the intel it indicates, the people do come from outside Afghanistan for training inside Afghanistan. They do get training inside Afghanistan, and they do leave Afghanistan to where we don't know. But those things that inside Afghanistan, we have uh, sort of eyes and ears, we know that that process is happening. Why is Afghanistan the prominent training center for terrorism? Because it doesn't have a legitimate government. Because the regime which is in charge right now in Kabul has the same ideology as the rest of the terrorist groups. Is that the only country that is like this? It's the main country right now in the world. Is there a difference between ISIS, Al-Qaeda, and Taliban? Yes. The difference is that ISIS is very young and they don't have the experience of Al-Qaeda and Taliban. So they cannot hide their intention as well as Al-Qaeda and Taliban. However, on ideology, they are just two sides of one coin. What is the difference in activity that ISIS do which makes them worse than Taliban? I challenge whoever says that they, they are different. They seem to publicly display the atrocities that they do to human beings yes. on a global scale a lot more than Taliban. Of course, you're absolutely right because they don't have the experience of Taliban and hiding and being patient and to have a strategic planning. But Taliban and Al-Qaeda, because it's been more than 30 years they're fighting, they possess that uh, knowledge and they possess that skill to hide it better and to plan for long-term uh, benefits and interest. The United States is funding the Taliban, to my understanding, yes. 40 million up to $87 million a week going directly to Taliban. Yeah. What is the goal of Taliban for Afghanistan? So what they do, they want to have a territory that they can operate, they can maneuver, they can recruit, they can train, and they can export. So when they see that if we keep fighting, killing, commit these suicide bombing, kill innocent people, commit all these atrocities, at the end, a superpower like America will come at Doha or somewhere else, will sit with us, talk with us, accept us as the reality, accept us as the only choice, and give us $70 million a week so we don't kill the people or starve them to death. Why wouldn't TTP continue with their ambitious plan when they see their brother next door did the same thing and achieved it? I knew that Afghanistan is uh, on the verge of collapse. They were saying that it, it was a surprise. I'm shocked. It was not a surprise. It was clear as a day that it was coming.
I personally warned Mr. Khalil Zad, the U.S. Embassy, some presidents and officials, I told them specifically that all the sites indicates that Afghanistan is going to collapse. It is tragic. It is devastating. It will be a huge blow to everything we achieved for the past 20 years. The withdrawal is unconditional and nothing is uh, and, and the right place and the Taliban are just waiting to take over. And everything so far has been doing, it demoralized everything else. Do not demoralize us with your negotiation with them. Just leave. It's okay. We fought before, we'll fight again. However, with what you do, you're holding our hands tight and you elevate them. And I'm sure one day you will blame us. And that's exactly what happened. That's enraging. France offered you an extraction during that withdrawal. Why didn't you take that? Not just France, many countries they offered. The faces that I looked at those eyes and faces and told them about freedom, about my father, about democracy, about human rights, about women's rights, about fighting terrorism. How could I just leave them after all those things I was preaching to them? And what would I do outside? I gave it a very hard thought nights before the collapse, and I knew it would happen. And just like my father, I was prepared to give the ultimate sacrifice. I just didn't want to be alive to see my country go this path. I get to see what happened, which is heartbreaking and a much bigger pain to me than death occurred to me. In my opinion, because I believe I'm a man of God and I believe in God, I believe that he kept us alive for a reason. And that's why ever since my purpose is to retake my country and bring back the integrity that has been taken from my country. Four things happened. First, a nation got a devastating blow. The dream of my people got shattered. Second thing that happened, it was the trust. People of Afghanistan filled with their heart and with their skin, how they can be abandoned over a night and be forgotten and be handed over to the same enemy that we have been fighting for 20 years together. The third thing that the world didn't witness was the catastrophic and terrifying terrors that Taliban did to the people. Girls went on the street, they brutally destroyed it, they threw them in jail, they raped them, they defamed them, and they destroyed something that even the communists, even the Russians didn't do such atrocity. But on the other hand, another thing happened. Some people didn't give up. They fought, and to this day they are fighting all along. So these Four things happen when the cameras left, when the attentions left. We always thought that Americans would never negotiate with terrorists. That happened. Bad negotiation and talk at Elevate Taliban too. And because it was managed and handled in the worst way possible and with no condition and with no regard to the people of Afghanistan, to the government of Afghanistan, the Doha conference collapsed the government of Afghanistan and everything we achieved for the past 20 years. The Doha is the reason for the Afghanistan the devastation. In that deal, the Taliban promised on many things, but the deal was made in a way that they did not hold Taliban accountable for anything. It was not conditional on anything. The Taliban were, okay, we hope, or we promise, or we do this. There was no condition in it. And that's what happened in Doha. That's why people in Afghanistan do not trust the Doha process. It's very unfortunate. It is a very dark stain in the history of Afghanistan. I truly believe that the path that we are taking is the right path. And I didn't wait for the permission of United States or Russia or China or Iran or any other country to tell me that, okay, you're allowed to fight or no, don't fight. For me, what I care is my people. Almost nobody in Afghanistan is supporting Taliban. Okay, Taliban say they, have the, they are the most popular group in Afghanistan. Very well. Let's hold an election. Let's see who people of Afghanistan decide to support. If it's you, I'll be ready to be hanged in the center of Kabul. If you truly feel that you have the popular vote, allow people to decide. I love one thing more than anything. I have a sweet daughter that I'm in love with, but even more than my daughter, than my family, than my father and his legacy, than my people and my country. Sean, I love freedom. I truly love it. Me too. I just, it's, it's the best and biggest gift of God. That freedom is worth dying for, and that freedom is something no one is allowed to take from another human being.
One thing is, is that I've been very honest with my people. And this was basically the strategy we had. The NRF operated and executed more than 25 attacks only in Kabul. So you see, we proved that even all alone with no support, we stand, we proved it to ourselves, to our people. We created an org a narrative, we created an organization. Yes, the warfare is guerrilla warfare because it is a tactic against an enormous uh, group that has 70 million weekly handed over to them, that has $2.5 billion annually from Afghanistan income, that also have the backing of all the international terrorism and the biggest uh, source of income they have, which is the narco trade. And against such force, we cannot just go for a suicide attack. We needed to change the strategy and we managed to be very successful that in the past one and a half years, we didn't have one person captured and one person killed. Wow. No. Very precise, very calculated and very successful. Have you thought about going to the U.S. to personally ask them to stop funding the Taliban? I don't think they, they like me to be in, in the U.S. Not to just ask those questions, but to let them know how their policies is affecting the people of Afghanistan and how it is uh, probably it will affect a lot of aspects of people's life in America. You know how 9-11 changed the political, even social landscape of America. Imagine what would happen if something like that would happen again. There are a lot of concerns. There are a lot of policies that they're having which will have a huge impact. Forgetting about Afghanistan has always proved to be a wrong decision. But it is happening. To bring that awareness, it's something that uh, needs to be done. But so far, I don't see any interest in uh, accepting me in America and listening to what we have to say. It's been my understanding that the current administration has kind of blacklisted you from, from coming. What a disgrace. We lied and let everybody assume that Hamza bin Laden is dead. Yeah. Which it turns out he's not dead. What is he doing in Afghanistan? Well, one thing is that uh, Al-Qaeda for the past 20 years with their relationship with the Taliban, they complete each other. Al-Qaeda and Taliban lived so close with each other and so integrated with each other for so long that it is almost impossible to differentiate them now. For the past 20 years, there's a lot of weddings and marriages happened within them. Now they turned into a family. How can you break a family apart? It is proven that there has been marriages between them. So that's one aspect. The second aspect, the shared interest. Al-Qaeda helped them intellectually and helped them with experience and knowledge, helped them with the technical aspect of making bombs and, and expertise, and of course, helped them with the presence of the Al-Qaeda fighters. So they had so many shared experiences that it is impossible to differentiate them now. I spoke with a mother that at the beginning of war against the Taliban two years ago, before adapting the new strategy, which was the guerrilla warfare, he lost five member of family in one hour. His husband, two of his sons, his husband's brother, and his son-in-law. Five men of the family gone in one hour. They were killed like Nazis, blindfolded, hands tied behind their backs, and shot firing squad. And the Taliban released those photos publicly on Facebook. Exactly as the Daesh and ISIS killed their prisoners, they killed our people. And my valley, I called and I said, mother, I'm calling, my name is Ahmad Masood. I was weeping a little bit. I was terrified. How can I break this news to this woman? She already knew. She said, why I hear a shake in your voice, Ahmad Masood? Don't you talk to me like this. We have a hope in you. Tell me when is the next time that you give a call us? This time I will go to the mountain. I was speechless. Wow. If I give my life to them, it's not enough. This is the people of Afghanistan. Unfortunately, one thing that happened that our international friend and also the Afghanistan government, they didn't have the decency to destroy all those servers and those equipments to make it harder for Taliban to identify those who fought against them. So now, even worse than women of Afghanistan are those who fought against Taliban, those special forces and commandos and Afghan people who were in army because they have been fingerprinted like another, they know their identity. So now they can't go anywhere, they're imprisoned in their home. If they enter from any point from Afghanistan at the borders, if they go anywhere, inside Afghanistan, one fingerprint, they will know who is he and he disappears. They do not want to leave Afghanistan. They want to stay and fight. And we have enough credible and talented and experienced and trained personnel to take back Afghanistan and bring back order. However, 
when they see the messaging of the world is that we don't care, give in to the will of Taliban. Now the Taliban are our new besties, then they have no choice to say that at least save us too. Veterans are always being very high in the eyes and mind of people of America because of what they have done for their country. Ignoring them, it's a grave mistake that not only affect Afghanistan, but will affect the future of those who want to join army, that they will see that, okay, all these values that we have been preached to, we are going to Afghanistan for this. It was nothing but a lie. We're also extremely concerned because we have sons and daughters. You're warning us something's coming to the U.S. I think a lot of us have a very strong belief that we're going to wind up in Afghanistan again, and it'll be my son and my daughter doing this all over again, and that scares the hell out of me. But what we're doing right here and what me and Legend did and what me and Sarah Adams did, it is creating waves. I saw that one of our representatives in Tennessee, Tim Burchett, has proposed a bill to stop all funding from the Taliban. I can't believe there's not more congressmen that wrote that bill, but credit to him, and this is going to spread.